wine to trade, especially in this era of capital development. Um, which is why we have to problemify it as much as we can. It's why the one person organisation is as much as this one. Basis has to be acknowledging that work and organising work and for the international side. What happened after that, I think, is uh, very much. Uh, mm. Oh, oh, I said. Mm. If, if, if artists don't have a special role outside of the working class, if they're just a part of the working class and another industry, then, which I think. Something you were saying that kind of um, then then what kind of what, what is it going to do to form artist trade unions other than renegotiate the terms of artist slave work? You know, in the same way that all the other trade unions have renegotiated or um, industrial unions or whatever. So this kind of what's what's it going to do beyond? Unless artists do have a special role to play in the working class, which is sort of a vanguardist conception of an artist. I think when. Gustav was telling me yesterday about the artist union joining a graphics union, which didn't happen. But I think this moving out of this bubble of artistic work, that in itself is going to change things. Um, artists are very removed from the world. Breaking that down in itself is What goes on, what comes on from there, we can't really, I, I'm not, um, I don't want to set out a five year plan just yet, um, but I think we need to have a basis for action at this point, moving on, I think it's things we, we have to be spontaneous as ever, and, you know, look at the change in terrain. But is it, yeah there's lots of things, Any, anything from the point of view of like, of socialism or anarchism, Anything that didn't divide the working class is useful, and a way of sort of like of workers getting together. But artists have been used and propped up. You know, like police are workers in uniform, but they are they're propped up. They've got extra privileges that other workers don't have. You know, inflation pay wages, these sort of things, which help to keep them sweet basically and keep them doing the bidding of the state. So artists and artists are often used in this position as well. It's kind of like um, paid extra extra privileges that then. So, so although they're part of the working class, it's kind of they, they can often be aided and abettors of the capitalist class. Absolutely. And yeah. sort of, yeah, I don't know. It's yeah, it's, like, it's there's so many problems in there. But it's worthwhile thing to get on with that. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge task. <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge fucking task. The abolition of the wages and, system. Yeah, and we're, we're not gonna. Look, but I think it's it's worthwhile to um, discuss ways that we can take things forward in, in our own way. Um, well, allowing us all helping to facilitate a situation where that can happen. The soldiers, the soldiers aren't allowed to join trade unions or form trade unions and nor do they want to, they're given enough incentives to not need to. And anyone who's already in the in the army isn't sort of the top of their mind isn't, oh as a member of the working class I've got to join a trade union. The top of their mind is I'm gonna go and kill these people because they're not from my country. There's a lot of indoctrination that goes into getting people into the army. So right. Well yeah. Artists yeah. don't artists think that they're fucking gods mm. all the time. They see themselves as far superior to I think yeah, in some way I'm, I'm interested in this kind of like trying to create a material basis for what we're talking about. Where so you've got like you've already got certain working models of things that could then translate themselves into bigger things. Because unless you've got this kind of you can't have a revolution just based on 
without, without this basis already existing. It's got to be something, you know, the bourgeoisie grew out of feudalism, right? It grew out of um, a merchant class. So it already had its material basis that it expanded from. So we've got to create a materialist basis that's based around some of the things we're talking about, workers' democracy, workers' power, that can then shape into a larger thing. And it's a, this is kind of in contradiction to a lot of things that I used to think. Kind of, I have a member of the Socialist Party of Great Britain. Party. Have you heard of it? Well, anyway, it's a sort of... Have you heard of it? No, <laughs> but I'm, no one's <laughs> I'm on the other side. <laughs> yeah. <It's kids. laughs> it's a, have you heard of the World Socialist Movement? And it's kind of... And it's a, the, to be fair to us, you know, we've kind of... We sort of we have, I always had a criticism. We go since 1904, so that's like 100 and something years of failure. But... <laughs> Yeah, we've always had this criticism of authoritarian regimes and of capitalism not being state capitalism and of um, the need for workers self-management and workers' organisation. But it can be a very theoretical basis of kind of going to workers and talking to them and handing out these leaflets and pamphlets and stuff, rather than trying to create pre-existing material circumstances whereby it, that can then be expanded. You know, like in anarchist Spain, where there, there was actually a lot of work being done to create these, yeah. these circumstances in the first place that then could have expanded, if, you know, Right. It's no good about talking what could have happened right. in this day, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think that's the, 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 the major thing that's standing in the way is just the kind of cultural perception of what, what the relationship between, you know, artists and everybody else are. And yeah, I think that can only, which is kind of what I was trying to say earlier, is, you know, the, most of the people in these situations don't have the... the the uh, luxury to think beyond how they're going to get bread tomorrow, mm. and so I think it's only, you know, or at the least I think it's essential, like you say, you know, mm. to be acting on that, to be there today and tomorrow, and to be a part of that that daily struggle, which really constitutes, you know, mm. in people's lives. Yeah. yeah it's also about to do with this thing uh, of workers just thinking about the bread and butter that they might get. It's to do with. You are mainly talking about the U.S. and, and well, that's Brit- my direct Britain. experience. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's interesting how like comparing like Britain and a series of unsuccessful strikes in the recent days, mm-hmm. and how maybe a bit more progressed system of uh, security and uh, yeah, kind of disbanding these possible actions. It's quite different to what was happening, what is still happening in like France and Greece and these countries. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, also yeah. yeah to do with the, like England as a country of a birth of capitalism. Uh, it's interesting how these things progress and they culturally so rooted in a way, so they make right. these things quite po- uh, impossible. Right. Whilst in some countries it's still kind of there is this debate. Yeah, I'm coming from Lithuania and Lithuania. There is no union movement whatsoever, you know, in this kind of post-Soviet uh, country. It's it's also just you know, I don't want really to divide, but there might be a thing of yeah, some some kind of yeah, maybe some forces of yeah, ideology shaping the culture as well. Yeah, and you know, everyday interactions and our daily lives. Isn't a lot of that though that they're just suspicious of anyone saying, you know, let's form a trade union because they just associated with state capitalism with these? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Lithuania, it's so, so, so difficult to have any of this debate, and there are so few people actually attempting to break this through and through. And yeah, and and the language in Lithuania, let's say, it's it's so, so complex. You know, you to talk about, start talking about these things, you are immediately associated mm-hmm. with Russia. Yeah, it's so. This is a similar thing in the West as well. Happen. If you try and you tell someone you're a socialist or a communist, and either think that you're for the old Labour Party or you're for some sort of Bolshevik vanguard, you know, only means production. But so these words become kind of like, and, and then they ask questions like, do you try and keep on using these words because and use the words for their original meanings, what they've always meant, or do you? Uh, Kind of assert different words and try and use different ways of like like uh, there's people calling themselves associate associationists a bit, which is a bit of a mouthful for a start. But kind of a, right. you know how do you how do you do these things? You, yeah, I, I found in my own situation, I, it's 
um, you know, I, I was working with mainly people from various points in South and Central America, and so again, they social they associate socialism with, you know, Chavez and Venezuela, or with you know Cuba, or with these other things, which most you know, you know, we didn't have you know have not reached the point that that, that Russian communism did. Um, but again, you know, what, what I've kind of come down to is not using any isms or calling what I talk. About. I just try to direct the conversation certain ways. Of you know, at, the, at this point, avoiding the, t- the avo- avoiding the things that are I know are going to set off you know flashers and make people close off to the ideas, is, yeah. which isn't an ideal situation in the long term, you know. But I think, in a sense, I, at least you know, again, I can only speak in my own experience. You know, keeping away from any kind of anything that that, that tends toward an orthodoxy, you know, is, is what seems to be able to kind of slightly but materially affect people's kind of, you know, ways of thinking about things. I think that just sort of says something I said before again, kind of persuade people that socialism is possible or that anarchism is possible, whatever you want to call it, you know. Right. And that um, kind of, instead of being this kind of like an antagonism with things all the time in a very negative way of kind of trying to renegotiate stuff within capitalism, that something else right. is actually possible. And a lot of the time trade union demands I'm a bit iffy about supporting trade unions per se because trade unions are just renegotiating right. the terms and, and basically, so you know, it crumbs off the master's case. table, isn't it? And we yeah. want the bakery, basically. Right. So this kind of... <laughs> that's yeah. a socialist life. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think it, artists maybe could, or cultural workers or whoever we are, could kind of um, maybe look at that, like, look at, like... I don't know, like trying to set up like hypothetical situations, maybe, or mm. things to do with how socialism, you know, how social society could work, how it could be possible. Right. <laughs> In a sense, it's I think at the root of, of what the situationists were trying to do, well, you know, whether you know to whatever extent they did or not, you know, achieve that or did or did not remain in a lot of, you know, very problematic kind of attitudes toward creative production, you know, I think that is, I, I, that, that, that's, a, a, I think, a way to kind of, yeah, materially set up something that you can use as a base from which other things can kind of grow, you know, just kind of micro-communities, you know, small communities that, you know, whether they're trying to, you know, whether it's a commune that tries to be as fully socialized or anarchized as possible, or whether it's, you know, nodes that try to ex- explore different ways that, that you, I guess, in Mr. Toe's kind of sense, you know, that you can kind of create these kinds of mm. of zones of, of capitalist negativity, you know, to, to, to see how things can interact to a certain, or not, I guess, how, how things can survive <laughs> within the capitalist society that people need to live in while still maintaining ties with the rest of the world, which is the danger with a completely kind of withdrawal into a, you know, but I think both kinds of projects could benefit a lot from each other. Yeah. But, co- but communes, the problem with communes is that a lot of them, there tends to be lots of infighting in communes because right. a lot of people, yeah. small people, are living here in a group yeah. it, and it implies to the working I class, to other people, <laughs> yeah. that you know, socialism is going to be this right. these little collection of exactly. that somehow going backwards to something. Right. Right. And also in a commune, you don't have kind of if you're going to have spe- have right. self-sufficiency, you don't have access to technology. So if what we want is to use the technology right. of mass right. production right. to free yeah. up human time yeah. to think. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, so but I agree with you, like the. It's got it's it's got to come from some sort of way of making examples and some sort right, of way of right. You know, it, it may be examples of how you can begin to to draw the, you know a, a, a community out of you know a capitalist society that it still needs to exist within or interact in. But you know, in what ways can we draw ourselves out of that? And then, in what ways can you share that you know with people who aren't coming from the perspective that that these conclusions come naturally? I think that communes are very. I, I, I agree. I don't. I, I entirely agree. I'm just <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the idea of working workers' organisation is a political basis for moving forward. I think the, the, the idea of the, the trade union. There was, a, there was a debate in the 80s. There was a guy who was um, Dave Douglas, who was a member of class war, um, who went had a debate with other class war, like an anarchist. Um, he was a miner. But he writes about how the trade union is not just a capitalism, it's a workers' organization. It's a 
behind you as well. And it protects the work. And that's the that's the essential. That is the final mode that will outlive because it's a work as well. Yeah. But then, like, to use like the miners as an example, there was loads of like in the 1950s and stuff when the Labour government were in power, there was loads of like sort of inter dealings going between the trade unions and the state. Oh, yeah. They're kind of like, you know, were actual trade union leaders who were a lot of members of the Communist Party, actually, so called Communist Party, you know, Bolsheviks. But um, they kind of. Uh, yeah, in, you know, telling workers to work harder or to but accept it. We're not talking it. about the leaders, we're talking about the workers. Mm. The workers were saying No, well, the workers actually got an antagonism with their leadership. Yeah, so exactly. They're, so, like, but the, they're, the, they're, they're, the, they're the real union, yeah. The union. We don't see the bosses as, as unions. Yeah. We're talking about workers as well. No, not bosses in the office. We're not interested in that. Thank you, Bob.